for experiment number two, your experiment number two is wing load distribution. So we have to calculate our wing load distribution. So what are the loads which has been applied through wings? So the wing is said to be the most important uh, uh, one for uh, flying the your aircraft. Yes, you may all know. And we will be considering V stall here. See here, we are considering V stall. And uh, uh, we are considering V stall during landing as well as during the takeoff. Okay. And uh, it plays an important role in the maximum velocity. And uh, we try to bring about the weak stall velocity. And with respect to that, what will be the wing load factor? That is uh, the velocity load factor diagram. And uh, after that, we will be having the maximum velocity. And then uh, your aircraft will be in cruise condition. Okay. So during all such conditions, what about your uh, load, which has been carried by the aircraft wing? So during stalling, your load is said to be high. And uh, uh, during uh, landing as well as uh, during uh, takeoff, okay, wing load is very, very high, right? And then we have to estimate it. We have to estimate it. So the loads of the aircraft wing are generally lift and drag, okay? So the loads of the aircraft wing is nothing but lift under drag. So uh, the distributed weight of the wing uh, is nothing but we will be having the engines which has been mounted on the wings and uh, fuels you are storing on the wings or else if you consider fighter aircraft, weapons has been stored and a few structural elements are there are present in the wing, right? So you are carrying too much of weight in the wing. So when you carry too much of weight in the wing, what happens? Right. So with respect to weight, it already affected and with respect to aerodynamic load, it has been affected. So we have to estimate uh, what is the load which has been acting in my aircraft wing. Okay. So as an aircraft designer or as an aircraft uh, uh, design project member, okay, what we have to do is, first of all, you have to estimate this span-wise lift distribution. That is said to be the very important point. So this is nothing but you have the span-wise lift distribution means you are considering the semi-span, not an full span, okay. So uh, we have the finite aspect ratio of the wing, which you had been estimated from your ADP1 and uh, the lift distribution vary along the span from maximum lift at the root and to the minimum lift at the tip, okay. And uh, the span-wise lift distribution should be proportional to the wing platform, okay. So what you have to calculate is, you can uh, calculate this lift distribution using vortex panel method, okay, which is said to be the most familiarist method. And uh, you can be able to recall this vortex panel method as simple form, right? And now uh, we'll be uh, saying about this uh, trapezoidal rule. So this is the wing tra trapezoidal equation, uh, which has been uh, derived analytically from uh, span wise lift distribution, right? So the trapezoidal wing platform distribution. So this is the equation. And this Y, Y is nothing but the uh, span. Okay, so Y is nothing but the span. So span of the wing. And uh, this Y represents a semi-span also, right? You are considering from root to tip. So that Y is been considered as uh, starting from root to tip, not tip to tip. If it is tip to tip, it is called a span. Uh, it is, uh, this Y is uh, considered as semi-span, right? And this is the equation which has been given for calculating the uh, lift over an or lift distribution over an trapezoidal wing platform. Here for my aircraft, I am having the trapezoidal wing platform so that I am using this formula. And then uh, we have the taper ratio of my particular design aircraft is 0 0.25. So if any of your students uh, who are uh, going to design your uh, two seater or three seater aircraft like Cessna, Okay, you will be having the rectangular wing means you can write the tap ratio as one. Okay, and then the value of a uh, root card and the tip card both are set to be equal so that uh, the value of tap ratio is set to be one here, right? And then according to my, what are my known data? So my CL value at cruise, which has been estimated from ADP1 and then density at a 10,000 feet altitude has been taken now. And the CR, that is nothing but root card, and the CT, that is my tip card, has already been estimated. And uh, uh, we can to find the value of 
lift at root and lift at tip okay so for lift at root i am going to use this formula of rho uh, v square cl into s okay that is uh, we have the chord length uh, with respect to chord, chord length we have to find so this uh, lift at root per unit span i am going to calculate the value of lift at root at per unit span so that the span is not here so you are just substituting the value of root chord and you are finding the value of uh, lift at root and uh, in the same manner you are finding the value of lift at tip now you are going to calculate the uh, trapezoidal lift okay so using this formula you are just substituting and you are finding this value of a uh, uh, trapezoidal lift so this is your trapezoidal lift equation which has been starting from root zero to the tip of the wing so root is as zero and the tip as of the span is 18.42 so this is with respect to span we are calculating the value and you know the value of uh, tap ratio lambda it has been substituted here 0 0.25 and we are estimating the value of trapezoidal root, right? Now we are going to calculate shear force and depending moment analysis. So for span wise lift distribution, so this is the formula and you can calculate the value of lift throughout the unit span. So uh, we can have this equation now, right? And uh, we will just uh, uh, do it for 0 to 18.42 for different values of intervals like uh, 1.5 1.5 intervals and uh, we will find the value right and we will find the value for each uh, values okay we will be finding the value of this uh, lift distribution uh, span wise lift distribution okay so let me use the excel sheet new excel sheet right so in this uh, uh, first of all I'm having the semi span, okay. Semi span, that is why. So for regular semi span, why? Okay, what is my lift distribution? So what is your lift equation? So lift equation is, yeah, here it is. Three five zero three six point five four. Okay, three five zero three six point five and uh, three five zero three six point five into one minus zero point zero four point. into y okay so this is your equation now uh, you are going to estimate this value of lift for each span so i'm starting from span zero and then the span ends at 18 point 18.42 okay so my span starting from zero and then it has been ending at 18.62 so i'm going to divide this span as equivalent equivalent length okay so like uh, 0 0 0.52 right so 0 0 0.52 9 here 9 here and just copy and uh, you can paste it here right and uh, still i have to estimate it for 18.42 right up to 18.42 i have to find so just select it so up to 18.42 I have to find 
right? So for this h span distance, what is my lift distribution? I'm going to find, right? So using this same equation, so equal to three five zero three six point five, okay? And then use the symbol multiplication. So into, and then here you have one minus of 0 0.04, okay, into, into this y. So this is your y, right? So here you can just uh, close the bracket, okay, and uh, press enter. So I had find the value of lift for uh, zero distance. And then when you increase the span, when you increase the span, okay, your lift value is decreasing, right? So at the tip, you will find the lift as uh, 9221.6089. Now for this, right, just select these two things and you select the complete thing, right. Now you go for insert. So in this insert, you can try for the linear chart like this, right. So when you go for a linear chart like this, you will found the value, right of lift distribution. So this is your lift distribution throughout the span. So as the span increases, what happens to the lift? So lift is eventually decreasing, right? So this is nothing but span-wise lift distribution. So this kind of a span-wise lift distribution had already been estimated by us. And here is also we are showing here. So I can just enclose your experiment number one and experiment number two in the LMS and you can practice it, right? And you can submit those assignment and I will give you the assignment time for one month and uh, you can start preparing and uh, sit, stay back and uh, you just practice all these calculations and they just uh, uh, draw all the plots and charts, right? So, okay. Uh, in last class, we had discussed about uh, the shear force diagram and then we had also drawn the cast envelope PN diagram, right? And uh, uh, we had uh, uh, formulated the span-wise lift distribution. Okay, so in last class we had plotted this span-wise lift distribution. So here is the Excel sheet uh, which indicates the span-wise lift distribution. So my span of the wing starts from uh, root chord that is zero, and then uh, it uh, the tip chord is about. Uh, uh, 18.42. So this is my span. So with respect to this span ways, okay, what is my lift? So using this equation, I had formulated and I have calculated the value and I had made the graph, right? So this is your first graph you have to do. Similarly, you have to go for shear force calculation. Okay, next we are going for shear force diagram for my aircraft. Okay, so 